Please be seated. If you aren't already. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Shalom. Peace. Peace is a gift. The promise of love shared. The sense of being at home with someone who loves you more than life itself. Shalom is more than just the absence of conflict. It's the deeper peace that lives in a sense of safety, serenity, and security, of well-being and wholeness. It's something that human beings desire, I think, at a level that's hard to talk about. Normal speech just won't do. To speak of peace almost requires us to use poetry, or Hebrew, or finally, silence. A couple of weeks ago, I was at a conference in Louisiana with a group of retired clergy sponsored by the wonderful church pension fund to give us a chance to rest and take a close look at our lives. After two postponements because of the pandemic, I was grateful to be able to go, knowing I would be helped to examine some options for this stage of my life deeply and prayerfully. The conference center was peaceful, beautiful, comfortable, and blessed with a terrific chef. <laughs> what more could a tired old priest ask? As I sat with a few of my new friends on the porch overlooking the little lake, a few lines of poetry came to me from another conference over 20 years ago. William Butler Yeats's The Lake Isle of Innisfree. So I had to go look the poem up. I will arise and go now and go to Innisfree and a small cabin build there of clay and wattles made Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honeybee, and live alone in the bee-loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. There midnight's all a glimmer and noon a purple glow, and evening full of linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day I hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore, while I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's gray, I hear it in the deep heart's core. I remembered having studied the poem in English 211 back in the 60s, of course, but I think I must have been too young for it then, too eager for active experience to have any real idea of what Yeats was talking about. But all these years later, I had taken my gray hairs and gone looking for clues, and here they were. Simplicity, solitude, connection with earth and sky and water, and silence. Attention to the voice that speaks in the deep heart's core, calling me to peace, to shalom. There's a lot of wisdom there, and we all know it. For quite a few of us, I suspect, those things were among the motivators that brought us to Tryon in the first place, or, as in my case, brought us back. We found ourselves somewhere, standing on the roadway or on the pavement's gray, feeling a little lost or a little anxious or even maybe a little angry, and we made a conscious decision to arise and go to a different place, a place where peace would seem tangible as we built the porches and placed the rocking chairs and cleared the stones out of little garden plots. The whippoorwill sang, in the deep heart's core, and we answered and came away. Have we found the peace we came seeking? Some have, I'm sure, maybe even most of us at least to some degree, 
But in this world, there is no easy escape from roadways and pavements gray. They lure us and lead us to bigger towns and busier stores, pushing us to dilute our peace with all the complicated conveniences of our culture, keeping us from sitting still long enough to know the peaceful sounds of silence. We've done what we could to give ourselves some peace, but the world we live in doesn't let us hold on to it or enjoy it for very long. And actually, judging by John's gospel, it's always been that way. Jesus wasn't talking to a group of folks who lived in a monastery on a mountaintop where nobody ever came. They were in a room on an upper floor of a building in a city. The roadway outside the front door, with its version of Yates's pavement gray, ran past the houses of neighbors who knew little of what went on next door or across the street. People were just as disconnected from each other, from the world around them, and from God back then as we are today. Peace, shalom, was just as hard to come by. And yet Jesus said, peace, I leave with you, to his mystified and fearful friends on the eve of his death. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. The peace that the world allows is only partial, only temporary. The peace we try to arrange for ourselves by building cabins and beehives and planting rows of beans by a lake, that peace can never be enough to satisfy the longing that lingers in Yeats's poem and in the deep heart's core. We need the peace that Jesus gives, the peace of the Lord. And actually, we have that peace available to us in a ritual we practice every Sunday. One of the most beautiful changes in the 1979 Book of Common Prayer is the recovery of the church's ancient kiss of peace it's a powerful thing to turn to your neighbor, whether it's a spouse or a child, a friend or a stranger, to look that person in the eyes as intently as Jesus ever looked at someone he was healing, and to say a short but very real prayer that he or she might know the peace that only Jesus gives, the peace of the Lord. It's a blessing you can feel in the deep heart's core. Now, I'm willing to bet that most of you never thought of the peace that way. In all the years since we first encountered it in the revised liturgy, my experience of the exchange of peace has too often been, well, at the very beginning, either a ritual versicle and response mechanically recited, or much more often and sure enough around here, a pleasant but rather chaotic round robin of hugs and handshakes. <laughs> no. I've heard people chat about Saturday's golf game during the piece. <laughs> I've heard people make plans to get together for dinner. I've seen clergy use the piece to send acolytes scurrying for something that was left in the sacristy. I guess we really don't just get it any more than the 11 did when Jesus first offered them his peace that night. But in a few minutes after we've said our prayers and before the great prayer of Thanksgiving, we get to do it again. I'd love it if our exchange could be today what I believe it was intended to be, a moment of real connection with each other as particular individuals. And through each other, with Jesus, who was, remember, God in a particular individual. Receiving the peace that Jesus gives does actually warrant a little preparation. So how do we do that? First of all, it takes silence and it can use a little solitude as well, if you can manage that. Every spiritual guide I know says to start out every day with a quiet time, even if it's just a few minutes. Don't do anything. 
even if that feels at first like a waste of time. Don't say anything. Just be still and wait. God is there, present with your silence. And by God's grace, you'll be aware of that presence. And when you are aware, your prayer will come. This is not prayer by rote or out of the book, even if you use the daily office or words you memorized long ago as you knelt by your bed. It's the prayer of faith. Faith that looks for God everywhere and hangs in, keeps on looking, even when God seems to be silent or absent. It's confidence, which may be another word for being at peace. Confidence that God is God, that God loves the world, that God is for us, and that God makes that love real in acts of self-giving. We can practice that silence in company, too, as the Centering Prayer Group that's been meeting for months on Thursdays has discovered silence and prayer together and the faith that emerges from them. So take a moment right now, if you will. Close your eyes. Breathe slowly and deeply. Arrange for yourself all the inner peace you can in this moment and pray for the grace to receive the gift that Jesus offers, his peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Use your mind, but trust what you know beyond your thinking. Breathe in and go deeper to the deep heart's core the place where below reason you know it's true that God is God, creator and guardian and lover of all that is. In the silence, feel the love of God holding the world safe from the beginning of time. You are held in the loving hands of God, cradled like a child in its parents' arms, safe and secure and hoped for in every way. Shalom. Now open your eyes and look at the people beside you and around you. Each one of them needs that peace just as much as you do. Can you pray for enough of it to share when the time comes in a few minutes? Peace, real peace, God's peace comes dropping slow, comes here and now, if we can be still enough and prayerful enough to notice. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Amen.